This is section 1.7 of algebra. So down here in this box we have the distributive property and we have an illustration of it up here. Um, if there is a number, if we look over here at these numbers, if there's a number outside of parentheses and inside the parentheses we have addition or subtraction or an operation, we need to distribute that number to every term. So we distribute the 8 to the x and we distribute the 8 to the 5 and it turns into 8x plus 8 times 5. We'll take a better look at some examples in this next slide. So if we look at this 3x plus 3 times x plus 8, we distribute the 3 to the x and we distribute the 3 to the 8 so we get 3x plus 24. And the same thing works if the number is behind it. You still distribute it to both things. So let's try our got it problems. A is 5 times x plus 7. So we've got to distribute the 5 to the x and to the 7. This is equal to 5 times x plus 5 times 7, which is equal to 5x plus 35. B, I've got 12 times 3 minus 1 sixth T. So I'm going to distribute the 12 to the 3 and to the 1 sixth T. And I get 12 times 3 minus 12 times 1 sixth T, which is equal to 36 minus 12 sixths. T, which is 36 minus 2t. And then in C we have in parentheses 0.4 plus 1.1 C and then I've got a 3 on the outside so I distribute the 3 to the 0.4 and to the 1.1 C. So 0.4 times 3 plus 1.1c times 3 gives me 12 plus 3.3c. And finally D, got 2y minus 1 in parentheses times negative y. So I'll distribute that negative y And 2y times negative y is going to be a negative 2y squared. And then I have minus. And 1 times, or negative 1 times negative y becomes a positive y. Or you can think of subtracting a negative y. And I get negative 2y squared plus y. Okay. We can undistribute, kind of by taking apart fractions. So if you look at this example here, this fraction is over 5. I can pull that 1 fifth out because I'm just multiplying there. And then I can distribute in the 1 fifth. Let's try an example down here. So I've got 4x minus 16 over 3. So I'm going to pull that 1 third outside and then leave my top stuff out there. 4x minus 16. Now I can distribute that 1 third in. So I get 4 times 1 third minus 16 times 1 third. Oh, drop my x. There's my x. Which is 4 thirds x minus 16 over 3. Can't simplify that anymore. B I've got 11 plus 3x over 6. So I'll pull that 1 6 out front. And I've got 11 plus 3x. Now I need to distribute that 1 6 to my 11 and to my oops, 3x. And then I get 11 6 plus. 3 over 6x 
which then simplifies to be 1 half x. See if I can fit this in here, but c is 15 plus 6x over 12. So I'll pull the 1 12th out. And I get 15 plus 6x. Now I need to distribute my 1 12th. So 15 times 1 12th plus 6x times 1 12th. That'll give me 15 over 12 plus 6 over 12x, and that 6 over 12 turns into 1 half x. Try to squeeze d in here maybe at the bottom. d is 4 minus 2x over 8. So I pull the 1 eighth out front times the 4 minus 2x. Oops. Then I need to distribute that 1 eighth. Which gives me 4 over 8, which I'm just going to erase. That's 4 over 8 is 1 half. Change that to 1 half. Minus 2 over 8. Oops, run out of room there x, but 2 over 8 is the same thing as 1 fourth. So I'm going to rewrite that as 1 fourth x. There we go. Alrighty, if there's a negative out front, we can turn that into a negative 1 and then distribute the negative 1 to everything. So in a, I'm going to change that to be a negative 1 out front, and then I have a plus 5 and distribute that negative 1 which turns into a negative a minus 5. Again, change it into a negative 1 out front. Negative x plus 31. Distribute that negative 1, so I've got negative x times negative 1 plus 31 times negative 1. Negative x times negative 1 gives me a positive x, and 31 times negative 1 gives me a negative 31. Alrighty, change that to a negative 1 out front. 4x times negative 1 minus 12 times negative 1. <clears throat> That'll turn into a negative 4x plus 12. And finally, d, turn that into a negative 1 out front, 6m minus 9n. So 6m times negative 1 oops, minus 9n times negative 1. This turns into a negative 6m plus 9n. Okay, we can use the distributive property to make some mental math, some math that we do in our head a bit easier. So, in their example, the, pro the cost of a sandwich is $4.95. Well, we can change that $4.95 into 5 minus 5 cents and then use the distributive property to solve our problem. So let's try this one down here. Julia commutes to work on the train four times each week. A round trip ticket costs $7.25. What is her weekly cost for tickets? Use mental math. Two ways we could set this up. Four times 7.25. That's the same thing as four times seven, oops, seven plus 0.25. I think that might be the easiest way, but otherwise you could set it up as 4 times 8 minus 0.75. I'm going to stick with this 0.25 way because I'm better with quarters. So if I distribute this 4 times 7, 4 times 0.25, 
4 times 7 is 28. Plus 4 quarters gives me a dollar. So I get 29. So it costs her $29 for her weekly tickets. Okay. A term is a number, a variable, or a product of a number. So this is a term, this is a term, this is a term, and this is a term. A constant is a term that has no variable. It's just a number. So this right here is a constant. And a coefficient is a numerical factor of a term. The coefficient is just the number in front of the letters. So this 6 is a coefficient, this negative 5 is a coefficient, etc. So we look at this guy right here. We have coefficients of 6, negative 5, and 3, and negative 12 is a constant. Like terms have the same variable factors, meaning they have the same letters attached. So if we look here, they both have A's, so they have like terms. And this one, they both have X squared, so they have like terms. And this one, they, whoops, let's see if we see it. And this one, they both have A's, but 6 has an A and a B, so they are not like terms. They have to have exactly the same letter and the same um, numbers of them. So as we see in this one, they both have an X and they both have a Y, but this first guy has a single X while the second guy has an X squared, and that first guy has a Y squared while the second guy only has a Y. When we're simplifying algebraic expressions, we need to get rid of like terms. So right here, this is not simplified because we have two X's, and we also have two numbers that aren't distributed. But over here, this is simplified because I have one number, I have one constant, and I have one number with a variable. Alrighty, so let's simplify. You can check out their problem if you want to, to see their work, but I'm just going to jump down to our got it problem. So this is the same thing as 3y minus 1y. If there's not a number out front, there's just a 1 there, an imaginary one. 3y minus 1y is equal to 2y. B, I've got negative 7mn to the 4th minus 5mn to the 4th. They've got the same variables going. So I can simplify this. Negative 7 minus 5 is a negative 12 mn to the 4th. And C, I've got 7y cubed z minus 6y z cubed plus y cubed z. Okay, now check this out y cubed z, y cubed z, y z cubed. I can only combine the green guys because those are the ones that are the same. So, 7y cubed z plus 1, remember there's a 1 there, 1 y cubed z is going to give me 8 y cubed z, and then I'll just leave the 6 y z cubed alone. And then D, they want to know if we can simplify this expression. No, we can't, because look, let me use different colors here. Here we've got an x squared. Here we've got a x to the fourth. Here I've got just an x. Here I've got a constant. And here I've got x, y. So I can't combine any of those because it's not the same variable. And here's our lesson check. Alrighty, distributing the 7 
I get j times 7 plus 2 times 7, which gives me a 7j plus 14. Distributing this negative 8, I get negative 8 times x minus 3 times negative 8. Remember, it doesn't matter what order I multiply in, so the 3 could come first or the negative 8 could come first. Gives me a negative 8x plus 24. There's just a negative outside. I'm going to turn that into a negative 1. Let me make this a little smaller here. There we go. And I'm going to distribute my negative 1 to my 4 and to my C. Oops, running out of room here. Which is going to give me a negative 4 plus C. And I'll also change this into a negative 1 out front, keeping the 11 plus 2B. And then I distribute the negative 1 to my 11 and to my 2B. And I get negative 11 minus 2B. Rewrite each expression as a sum. Okay, I'm just going to change the subtraction into addition, I guess, because I can't combine any of those. So that's plus a negative 9x and plus a negative 3. Suppose I could also pull out the negative out front. Let's try doing that on this one. If I pull the negative out front, changing each of these signs. So I changed the 2AB to be a negative 2AB. And then I can change this negative here into a plus sign. AB squared. And then change this guy into a plus sign. 9A squared. B. You can go back and double check that if you don't believe me. Okay, tell whether each terms are like terms. This has an A, this has an A. This is like terms. Oops. This has an XY squared, and this has an X squared Y, so they are not like terms. And we'll stop there. Oops. There's your homework.